So the next day more PA risk fun. So to continue with this I wanted to network boot as I don't have a CD writer with me anyway. And turns out, so I just wanted to use this simple modern DNS mask thing and this wouldn't work. It would lock you some unsupported request from the IP I gave it there. So I actually switched to this TFTP HPA thing and this actually works. I locked TCP dump the traffic, although it scrolled away right now. But you saw there's some binary gibberish after the TFTP request, so not sure what's going on with this, why it works with this TFTP HPA or uh, the other. So the other thing is to boot you need a special leaf image, so not like a standard elf executable binary or something. So to create this elf image that works like this payload, this PA risk loader. This is cross compiled, so this is running actually on the AMD64 with a payload conf listing the kernel and init rd. So running payload with this, even as a cross tool chain compiled on AMD64 actually really works and results in this leaf image that we need. Here is this init tape leaf image. So let's try to boot that. And actually here they have light switch switchable power outlets. We don't have this in Germany. So this power outlet is conveniently wired to light switch like this. So we can conveniently start it like this and plugged in. So we only have here serial and ethernet and ethernet obviously going to this USB ethernet thing going to just the surface. Then we have here's a serial and to do this we want to cancel automatic boot. To network boot on the main menu we say boot LAN. Then this newer firmware will ask whether to interact with IPL. We could say no there I guess I usually say yes. This will load here we see with a TCP dump. Here we see this request, by the way, this is what I meant. Here is this request leaf image octet and here's some binary junk. No idea if this is just some random junk in the buffer or some standard conformant encoded whatsoever. However, this DNS mask does not want to parse this and uh, abort and with this TFTP HPA this works. So here on the serial console we now have here our payload loader and we could still edit things here. Here so this should be our 4181 kernel so I can say boot here. And I guess we have our first kernel loaded. 236 megahertz and searching for devices where is there not a kernel version printout so yeah so much for our main progress getting the first kernel booted and the first system installed with all the boot media and everything is always a little bit more challenging the first time this is yeah this is our yeah here we have it t2 and we get the kernel oops oops <coughs> Um, they're in some lazy probe thing. What is this now? It cannot create duplicate file name in. In uh, let's scroll. The joy of first platform enablement. Um, this is worn duplicate section text. Hmm. Of course there's always something not really working, just that you see what kind of stuff I have to deal on a weekly basis, keeping all the architecture supported in the life. So more success. We have a slightly older kernel booted, however this also has some small problems. The biggest problem is, um, let me show you, that it won't start the init script here failed to execute. Oh, interesting, they have touch 
Okay. Um, so fail to execute slash init and the reason for this is that I copied some default config because as you have seen the other config also for some reason didn't really want to work much and the default config had bin format script set to module and this bin format script is actually what is responsible for the execution of scripts with this hash bang so here's this hash exclamation mark slash bin slash sh so this kernel won't run any of our scripts but nonetheless this is some progress I also rebuilt the kernel again without some Hewlett Packard LASI SCSI support because this would currently hang this also had already problems on this very old Debian kernel so but this is for the most part now the first kernel that is mostly running this is by the way this is 4.17.14 so not that old actually the last stable release update from yesterday just that uh, 4.18 had this other issues you saw earlier so I need to later check what's up with this if this is just a config or some new regression as usual as so often but exceptionally can't blame anyone too much because you'll pick up PA risk obviously is not the most used and latest and greatest architecture so unfortunately regressions may happen so I mounted the file system here, the old one that this box came with and this really worked so SCSI works, here's the old Debian system as this is relatively well running I will now somehow rsync or copy I'm not in the office so I don't have all the greatest SCSI adapters for USB and Firewire to sideload here something by taking out the hard drive so we need to somehow get it over the network with rsync scp or something and then get our system fully started booted and ready to do something natively and once more the cpu info some nice pa risk 2.0 8200 with 236 megahertz i hope you enjoyed this raw tinkering videos Maybe leave in the comments below if you like this unscripted and unknown result tinkering or if you rather like to see some more tested out and more thought through filming after the fact. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. Give it a thumbs up if you have and don't forget to subscribe for the next videos to come. So let's see and get something installed. I prepared some more things including some special init RD so this is our newly cross compiled system. But as some things for network installation sec fault, for example ipconfig is some, is some small if config like utility that we statically link with dietlibc and this segmentation fault for some reason. And also fget is some small http thing that I'm not sure whether that works correctly, maybe not. So I built a custom init rd with the regular full configs like if config and also curl that normally are not in there. So let's custom get here some images. I also simply compress the whole cross-compiled root file system just to simplify this process here, make it slightly less painful. So let's manually configure here some stuff and get the files over. JRV Unicode, Glibberish. Actually I guess it was unnecessary because some of the B unzip 2 here also thinks this was also a minimal bnzip2 version that libc linked maybe that one also didn't want to work here maybe some small details miscompiled or diet libc syscall issue extract no no this works okay also good unless we run out of space i guess what was it here two page udfd two page fold wonder if we have enough memory for this I took some as I wasn't sure if those two additionally resulted in instability or incompatibility I took them out so oh, we have enough memory apparently much is still free free oh it's still something free 120 megabyte 
Okay, but then do we have XFS? Then I wonder should I risk? Ideally, I don't like this X34, X2 family, old fashioned file systems. Maybe I wonder if we can risk trying at least XFS. Let's see if this works. Hmm, things even work, all this cross compiled goodness. Could also actually swap on then, just in case. That was very clever to have a kernel without XFS. Yeah, okay, but anyway, we can, as we have all the tools, probably it's of course a pity as it comes from the default config I used because I had this strange kernel errors earlier. Okay. Then old fashioned X3 for now, I guess. And then that is. Uh, I think that. Yeah, so this compressed root file system is 400 megabyte. And there yeah, are 20 minutes over this Wi Fi actually. I So I still root this over this. Surface is Wi-Fi, so this is forwarding all the Ethernet traffic that is coming here over this USB cable, over this nice hub that I found in my, in my bag. This is the serial, this is the Ethernet, and that is going here to the PA risk serial and Ethernet. So Maybe I rebuild the kernel on the data center with XFS just for the fun and because I had too often problems and such with X2, 3 and 4 that I prefer on my modern systems better FS and on not as modern systems XFS. <coughs> Actually we have support for better FS, so let's go crazy and try if that works. Um, for this I want to save the download, not to wait 10 or 15 minutes for the download again. Swap so off. Little SCSI load test. So let's try make better FS on STA two. And noises. Use LCD compression. Of course, we want to go the most fancy if you already go so experimental. So then move our safe download back and wait another two minutes or so for this 400 megabyte on a single SCSI drive. So actually, really not that bad. Two minutes or so, something like that. This is already. Very quite full, the disk is not that big. Um, for gigabyte, where's all the space going? Okay, quite some swap. Um, somehow, is there not something left? Maybe there was something, boot something had to be below. Did I move this or did I copy this? I moved it already. Shit, otherwise I would try to reformat. No. Okay, let's see if we have enough space to unpack this. Actually, as we love experimental here, we could actually even later online resize the file system if, if for the first test boot level anyway, network, load the kernel and init RD before I make the next step and configure this locally installed payload loader. So I should probably not have uncompressed this, we're both over a 9600 baud serial link, so 
Don't repeat that mistake. Hey, we are finally done. So, lesson learned. Never verbose compress a tar over a serial link. Maybe should we try online resizing this immediately? So this starts from 3 to primary 3 to 9 1 maybe this ah plus I guess right plus Uh, 500 something should be way more than enough. Uh, right. Okay, we can resize this later. So let's mount this. So now we shouldn't make too many typos because we don't have job control as we are only running this one shell as init process, so we don't have job control with suspend and cancel. So we need to set at least a root password to boot this to log in and that should probably be mostly it and enable serial console so and just for the completeness yeah this is also no job control so we need at least a password test test did it successfully. Then we should also do we have a FS tab? We have a FS tab serial console. So these are all uh, in it tab. And we have here TTYS zero but of course nine six this was 96, right? What do we run here? 96 images. So, then the bootloader, but that we can do later. Maybe should we. Hmm, why is it happening? Okay, at least uh, the Liputif 8 proc. Hmm. Anyway, first we want to boot the system. It's the password we have set. So I guess we could give it a try, huh? Okay, a zoom link help for subversion, whatever is up with this. Because for T2 obviously we want to check out the sources. So by the way we could as we are already Okay, but um, this is um, quite nice to see that all the binary starts. That is always the first step for new architecture. Sometimes stuff are not yet 100% correctly configured or miscompiled and then stuff, segmentation faulting and such. So, human proc is def and mnt. Uh, why would have we... Then I only need to build one of those new live images without my installer stuff and only network boots the kernel and init rd and then see if it mounts and boots into the local SCSI hard drive. So let's see. Restarting the system should have the self test running. Then abort auto boot, boot lan. So this is our config. Root is due to TTY zero. Let's see if it boots. This is scanning the EISER bus with all the system stuff coming up there. P 
PCI. That, by the way, is using the set sound compression. I hope that's getting into mainline soon. So. UDEF, fingers crossed. I hear SCSI access. Hmm, something wrong with our battery FS. Unrecognized mount option. Hmm. Actually, this is manually mounted. I guess it is a subtle bug in this init script using SED and such. So, probably diet libc mini SED something for extracting the root file system, seeing there it has some bug that is causing some mount option random characters in the string, I guess. So let's unfortunately manually type this in here now. Mount none move def So we cannot afford any typo in this line, otherwise we will panic Linux kernel without init. Switch root, I think it looks cache. Oh, why do we not have div no? Hmm. Did I mistype something? It's unfortunately another issue. So this boot continued here. Maybe some udev timeout thing and maybe it could actually be that this udev is a udev still running from the init rd um, as, as the rest continues here. But and this, then here maybe also some minor diet libc issue. Unfortunately, Udev makes use of all the fancy new kernel features. So whatever. Then it continued. So far so good. But then we got here some high priority machine check exception, HPMC. And this is curiously in. Uh, wait a second, the first one at least. I saw here somewhere some import something. Uh, here is some curious Dino in 8. I wonder if that is some some IO read. I wonder if this is exactly happening in this keyboard read delay thing. Hmm. I have to say, this are getting a spark working 20 years ago was much harder and actually the most difficult port so far was the MIP64 port with the Octane because there there were really so many instabilities 10 years ago. Let's see if I can get this booting tonight. Yes, we have Linux login. I recently, by the way, started to do some micro polishing. I changed our 20 year old used Angry Penguins thing, so maybe that is still cool though. But um, I'm not yet done with this polishing. I actually have a much much more simplified Surrey login thing and such and this is only the old fashioned alternative we had. I most likely will continue to make some T2 unique uh, fine polishing kind of stuff. So let's see which password did I, did I use test or ah, I use test, cool. So um, so this is still the system, I'm not faking anything that is course our PA risk and the only problem is this build does not have IP but okay we have F config so Okay, apparently the name server lines are not allowed to start with the space. So we could, so the only thing is, so right now we only have one server terminal, let's start. Oh my, oh, we also need. And we want to put this to the FS tab. Normally the stone installer would do this simple things like taking over the compress options. This is only because we manually fiddled it onto here. So as we, and why do we have a, what? Uh, 
Okay, so system is stable enough and all the libraries and everything matching and uh, in API and ABI agreement and such that at least subversion works with all the libraries and HTTP and SSL and everything. I will cancel this in a second though. And um, yeah, but this is pretty stable and this, this is in, in a few days more stable than MIPS. 64 was a decade ago in half a year time but of course nowadays not only did all the GCC, GLibc, uh, Linux kernel, everything major also T2 cross compilation and everything is more major and also PA risk is of course even more exotic than MIPS as MIPS is in all the root to success points and such and PA risk is only used by vintage and Unix fans Let's do a little more fiddling and another day also install a payload bootloader into the local hard drive and such. But so far so good. We of course we found some bugs, some kernel configurations exposed some bugs at least in this kind of configuration scenarios. And at least the keyboard refresh rate thing apparently causes a kernel bug. It, on a first glance I could be wrong but that looked like IO port access in this Dino system controller thing or so either bridge or whatever thing so of course it should also not happen in a production systems that some keyboard utility can panic the whole kernel and system and yeah next we also want to start secure shell to have some more comfortable login Far so good, only root login disabled as usual by default nowadays. That is, of course, a much nicer faster terminal to type then here is this native SSH full speed and where we are at it let's as a final step online resize the budget office and of course as usual we need to celebrate our success with some good listening to some lossless flag files